Last year, Fortune magazine named Xerox president Ursula Burns one of the 50 most powerful women in business. Known as an unconventional thinker who embraces new ideas, Burns is credited with saving the company from bankruptcy and restoring Xerox to its rightful place as one of the great innovative companies of our time. Ursula, nice to have you here. Thanks for joining us. Really pleased to be here. Your entire story seems to be seeped in radical thinking. Are you a radical thinker? You think I've, of yourself that way? I think so. Yeah, I think I am. A, I'm definitely a different thinker. What's the DNA of a radical thinker? I think difference. Coming from a place that um, is different than the norm helps um, to make that a natural way to approach problems or opportunities. And so I came from a different place. Where? So in other words, your upbringing yeah. really sort of shaped who you are as an executive, as a leader. I was born and raised in Lower East Side of Manhattan, single mother, you know, the, the story most people have read about. And that, um, for me, is normal. And uh, my approach to problems is from that background. But most of the um, problems in the industry are approached by different uh, people with different backgrounds. And so this mix um, at Xerox it allows this mix to actually come out and be a positive contributor to problem solving. A positive contributor to opportunities is great. It was a great place for me to land because it allowed me to be me. And you faced this idea that you had to redefine the company. You had to redefine innovation. Tell me how you did it at Xerox. Yeah, I mean, crisis is an amazing <laughs> a motivator. Um, when you're in serious trouble, we were in serious trouble at Xerox in the early part of the 2000s, and we had to actually think about um, what was our company about? What, did we, what was the value that we brought uh, to customers? So we actually used um, innovation as the, backbone, as the backbone to fundamentally define again, to redefine our company. So we actually steeped in innovation, started from innovation, steeped in innovation, moved our company forward and redefined ourselves. From success um, came more and more success. But, but put it into practicalities yeah. for us. I mean, how did you do it? Did you go back to basics and saying, I mean, because sometimes innovation is not necessarily a new great product, right? It's back to basics and saying, what should be driving this company? What are the sort of themes that will take us to the next level. Right. And for us it was, I mean, I love the words back to basics, because for us it was really that. We had to look at ourselves and figure out the things that we wanted to keep, the things that through all trouble we wanted to keep a hold of. One of those was innovation, the other one was focus on our customer. The other one was this idea about working as a team and being um, aggressive towards problem, problems and being aggressive towards, um, towards focusing on our customer and bringing value to them. So for example, we actually have um, research researchers for research labs around the world, actually. And these four research labs do what we call dreaming sessions with our customers. They sit with our customers and um, talk about problems and figure out solutions. So Scott Burke and Ranjay Galati, this is a classic example of what we've been hearing throughout this series, and that is you must connect with the customer. You've got to know what the customer wants probably before they necessarily know what they want. That's what Ursula and her team has done. Yeah, well, the, the question I was thinking about while you were talking was, you mentioned that early in 2000 there was this crisis and that led you to decide you wanted to invest big in innovation. But any investment in innovation takes some time to deliver and there was short-term pressure on you guys yep. to figure things out. So how did you, this is a great practical story, how, if you knew you had to make a long-term bet but there's short-term pressure on you to fix everything, how did you manage that contrast? Some of it, some of it is just belief in um, a model that has worked for you in the past. Okay. Xerox is a company based on innovation. We started 70 years ago, a guy decided to, you know, he figured out a solution to a problem, and that solution to a problem formed in the industry 20 years later. Mm -hmm. That's the company that we're in. And so we always kind of gyrate around this innovation backbone. That's how our company adds value. Okay. So it's not far from our DNA, it's in our DNA. It's not far from who we are as a company. On that, you were following your gut. You said, look, Xerox has worked before, and it's been sort of the staple in people's lives. It will but be again. You know what is interesting about your story, actually, is that it defies some of the theories of innovation that have been written about. It's, most people will say that it's very hard to find a revolutionary from within. Mm -hmm. That if you want radical new thinking, a different way of thinking about your business, you gotta go outside the firm, or if you're gonna even have it inside, you gotta sequester it, you gotta keep it separate so they don't get corrupted in their thinking, they're allowed to kind of think freely, and yet in your case, it's so different. Yeah. You actually led a revolution from within. Yeah, but, Here from right from the center, not from on the periphery, right. not right. from outside. Right. You're saying, no, revolution, and 
It was people who had grown up in a Xerox. Right. How do you get revolutionary thinking among people like yourself who, who are lifers at Xerox? Right. How does that happen? I tell you, one, I said it earlier, crisis is an amazing motivator. We were in a crisis. We had to make some really distinct uh, choices, and we made them. And one of those choices was that we were not going to stray far from the, thing that made, the things that made Xerox great in the past. Some things we had to change, but there were some things that made our company great. Innovation was one of those. Where's the next innovation coming Two from? areas that we are really focused on because uh, the good news is this is where the market's growing, this is where the market is going, and this is where the pain points of customers are. When you go to your doctor's office, for example, and the first thing that they do is hand you a, a form to fill out. Every, doctor, every time you go to the doctor's office, the same form comes uh, out. Exactly. There needs to be innovation when it comes to the healthcare so industry outside. Don't worry. We're working <laughs> okay. on it. So what we're doing there is that this is a, a place where digitizing that information, uh, storing it in a way that you can actually keep it secure, you can retrieve it when you want, and manipulate it and manage it when you want, and share it when, you need to, when it needs to be shared, is a place that Xerox is spending a lot of its research and development dollars to make sure that we can actually take the pain points and the crush points out of these document intensive processes. Another one is in, I'll give you an example, we work with, the, with the, um, a school district in Wilkes-Barre, and this school district has 7,000 students, and it took them, before we got involved with them, two weeks to enroll a student. We got that time down to, to 30 minutes, from two weeks to 30 minutes. Incredible. Uh, incredible. By digitizing, automating and digitizing, digitizing the whole enrollment process. It reduces errors, speeds up time, of course, and obviously, obviously allows teachers and administrators to get back to the real business of 